Okay, welcome back to Breakfast uh, Daily. It's time for the news review segment for today. And I'll start off with some print media. But remember that it's an interactive show, so we will definitely want to hear what your comments are on everything that we discuss. And the uh, hashtag is Breakfast Daily. All social media platforms and not forgetting the WhatsApp line is 0550-585832. Now, moving on, I'll start off with the Daily Graphic. The Daily Graphic front page has it here. KG Pupil 7 drowns in water tank. And that's a really, really sad story. Really, really sad. And also from uh, MPP-related news, their chairman, Freddie Blay, challenges Shraj over contempt case. He, he says it's, it's incompetent. The whole case against him is incompetent. Now, moving on, page 16 of the Daily Graphic also has another story here, which says, Nigerian traders at Swami. Nigerian traders at Swami magazine back to work. So that's what we have here. And earlier we discussed the fact that the Greater Accra Regional Chairman of Guta is saying that he was beaten by the police. Why? Ghana Police Service, what's going on? The Ghanaian Times, fight against corruption. Experts advocate constitutional change. My very good friend, uh, Domelo Voice, yeah, he's the Auditor General of Ghana. His face is on the front page of the Ghanaian Times. Also, Mrs. Clara Kesati, uh, Kazati, sorry. Uh, she's a private legal practitioner and not forgetting. Professor Stephen Adey, he is also here on the front page. And we shall be discussing the story in a moment. And as Santini distills offenso Ahimkra chief for alleged malfeasance, page 17 has the full details. Moving on. Fred Blay says Shraj contempt case flawed. And also, Danger Looms on Amasaman Sawam Road. Page 16 has the full details. Grab a copy of the Ghanaian Times and get more stories. Now, the Ghanaian Observer. National Security Minister wades into UEW saga. Directs Professor Yanka to clear chaos at UEW. Attacks on a Futu MP of course, the Member of Parliament for a Futu. My very own Honorable Alexander Apenio Markin. And uh, Freddie Blaze Storm's court says, Shraj's case against me, incompetent. We shall look at the story also shortly. Afri Africa needs a single air transport market now. Coming from the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Dr. Mahamudu Baumia. And also, police arrest Guta executives over trade war with foreigners. Um, the police action... I don't think it's the best. I don't think it's the best. That's no way to solve brewing tension. Volta region to host first regional town hall meeting. And uh, we shall be uh, well, fo following this for more de details and we shall update viewers on same. The new crusading guide. Four churches in Ghana receive support from Onu Oza. Uh, page 10 has the full details and also torture home blues don't publish it man of god threatens to sue an ass a new crusading guide hmm interesting mcdan wins magnate award as businessman of the year and um, renaissance all limited boss busted david i say it languishes in police cell for defrauding bdc Government warns UEWVC others over smear antics against Afenio Makin. Finally, revealed top GPHA management member behind workers' serialized protest against MPS deal. The final newspaper has on its front page here, EC sells voters' data to private company, raising privacy breach concerns. This is serious. This is very, very serious. So grab a copy of the Finder newspaper. Good morning to edit all the Finder, Elvis Darkon. Grab a, uh, a copy of the Finder newspaper to get more details. And also, um, Zipline Drone rescues 113 students from acute diarrhea. So page five has the full details. You should um, get more information 
from that page, National Security Minister concerned about conduct of UEW lecturer. Now let's move on to Gold Street Business by way of print. That's the last paper I shall be looking at, Gold Street Business. Esla buys back bonds from holders. That's what we have on the front page of Gold Street Business. It's also another story here which says government set for mini grids expansion. And um, finally, ITC revamps market or ITC revamps market access map trading platform to boost competitiveness of MSMSs in developing countries. Now let's move on straight to some online stories. Very, very important. Some of these stories, definitely, you should be reading right now on citynewsroom.com. So straight to citynewsroom.com, most informative website in the country. Uh, VRA, responsible for 98% of Ghana gas's debt stock, PIAC report. And uh, no basis for tariff increments. John Jinapo, former deputy sector minister. No, former Deputy Power Minister for that matter, also report alleged recruits being paid for no work done. Hmm. Coming from the NACO boss. And Eutu Senya, MC accuses NDC chair of firing gunshots during limited voter registration exercise. This is sad. This is sad. NADMO directors threaten protest over unpaid salaries. So that's what we have by way of news on citynewsroom.com. Now let's move on to some stories from our business website, citybusinessnews.com. Bank of Ghana lines up minimum capital requirements of Momo companies. Yeah, so maybe that's why we are being charged right now. When you're transferring money from your bank account to your mobile money account, we are being charged right now. Please stop that, though. We, we want it free. <coughs> we want it free. Uh, Ministry of Energy pushes target for universal electricity access from 2020 to 2025. Okay, now let's come back to the studio, and I'll introduce my guest joining me for today. Uh, remember that you can also join a conversation with the hashtag Breakfast Daily on all social media platforms. And not forgetting, the WhatsApp line is 0550-585832. I have been joined by the Deputy National Communications Director for the NPP, Joyce Zampari. Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast Daily. Good morning. So it's good to have you. <laughs> it's always good to be here. Very good, very good. We're talking about your, your, your party... Uh, chairman very soon in respect mm -hmm. of some contempt issues. Okay. Mm, I'm just uh, alerting you for mm -hmm. now. Very, very important. Mm -hmm. But I want to start off with some uh, discussions on vigilantism or the anti-vigilantism dialogues. I'm going to read from citynewsroom.com really briefly. And uh, before we even go on, did you wear the Black Stars came yesterday? Yes. Mm. Were you happy or you were disappointed in the final score? Disappointed. Mm, why? So am I disappointed? Well, let me say good morning to you yourself and your crew, and then your cherished viewers. Yeah. In fact, it's because of them we are who we are. Definitely. And we also have the opportunity to come here and deliberate on issues. Thanking God for being counted among the living today, too. Yeah. Oh, yesterday, <laughs> during the match, I experienced a bad, I had a bad experience. My car was broken oh. into everything. Oh, wow. Taken away. Your car was <laughs> broken into? Yeah, they broke into my car. And took everything, wow. everything. <laughs> so sorry, so sorry. Yeah, well, but I just closed from work. I just called a friend, mm. one police officer. I said, oh, you were just around mile seven. So I should come around there, sitting there to watch the uh, match. I said, okay, let me join them there. After the first match, the equalizer, before we could hear my car, the, the alarm was, was, was blowing. blowing, went off, and then what we could say, Jack. Two guys on the motorbike just sped off. Sped off. And then we realized they broke the back glass and took my bag. Everything. So sorry. So <laughs> sorry. Some of the price we pay <laughs> when it comes to things like this. What do you do? No, we didn't even win. But it's just it's just a, a, a caution to mm. all of us who go to places yeah. to have 
fan, you know, football, when you're mm. around places like that, that's where <laughs> you have the feeling, the opposing side, you know, you have those. In fact, there was this one great police officer who was <laughs> in the strong mouth, and he was the opposing. <laughs> he was for, for supporting Benin. Benin. And it was so interesting. It was, so, <laughs> it was full of fun. Anyway. Uh, so that we should be mindful of what we leave in our vehicles when we mm. get to places like that. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 so I need to let people know. Okay. Thank well, you. Now, aren't there yesterday they yeah. so disappointing. Let me see. Well, we knew we were going to the uh, Afri Afcon. Hmm. I would say I, I, I didn't have confidence in the team that we were presenting. Oh. Oh, of course. Let me, let's be truthful to ourselves. When you look at the age of our mm -hmm. players, to the new ones who have been brought on board. Mm. How frequent have they played together to make sure that they understand the technical mm. They have been gelled skill. well. They have been yeah. gelled well. Mm. And you know, all this things comes to play when it gets onto the field. Mm. Understand the cohesion between the team. Mm -hmm. And you could see that there were some of, there were a lot of lapses in their passes. Mm. There was not much understanding. In fact, mm. our passes were not going through. Hmm. And it looks like we're losing all overhead balls. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. So while, while you're analyzing that play, someone who was analyzing your bag in the car. I tell you. <laughs> and our coach, our hmm. coach, our coach, he has hmm. to do us a great favor. Hmm. In fact, John Boy, when he had the first yellow card, mm -hmm. immediately you could have substituted him. Hmm. You waited until... And John Boy too, should, should have known better, better hmm. that in matches like the next yellow card you get, was to get you off the field. So the time wasting was uh, not necessary. Time wasting was not necessary. Mm. Was not because you were in fact you were not even leading for you to say uh, what do you say? Why should you even delay? Yeah. There were there was still a lot of time for you to play around mm. to juggle the ball around to make sure that you mm. develop all the skills to make us have more uh, 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 goals. Mm. You understand? So you really like football. Oh, I <laughs> really <laughs> like football. We'll move I mean. on to the story. Uh, NDC is skeptical <laughs> over success of vigilantism dialogue. And it says here that the opposition National Democratic <laughs> Congress is skeptical over the success of the dialogue between the NDC and the New Patriotic Party, as well as the National Peace Council, aimed at finding ways to end political vigilantism in the country. Now, this follows the postponement of the adoption of a roadmap drawn by the Peace Council to help end the canker. So addressing the press after the fourth session of the dialogue series, General Secretary of the NDC, uh, Johnson Esiedun Ketia said, exits of the roadmap vindicated the NDC's position on the dialogue. So I'm going to uh, read a bit of what he says exactly. So he says here that um, this is a big problem which needs the engagement of all stakeholders who have a role to play in eliminating vigilantism. Two political parties alone cannot eliminate vigilantism. It needs everybody on board. So if we are able to determine if it is the work of the police, which hasn't gone down well, uh, that's why the Kanka is not being addressed. Then the police leadership needs to commit to doing their work better. That is how you draw a roadmap for implementation. How can we be sitting down here and be drawing roadmaps for issues that we don't have control over? If the MPP side raises any issue and there are recommendations to the president, then they are recommendations because we can't direct the president. And uh, he goes on to say, how then can we develop a roadmap for the issues that we have determined? We seem to be dancing around the problem without any solution. So uh, he goes on to talk about the work of the Mill Short Commission. And he's simply asking once again that, you know what, you should just release this uh, report. The president should just release this report. It would further enrich the roadmap or enrich whatever policies they're going to put down in respect of uh, moving forward to go past political vigilantism. I must say at this point that we are joined by Joyce Bar Mukhtari. She is a special aide to the former president, John Dramani Mahama. Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast Day. Good morning. Mm. Good so, morning to your viewers. Yeah. Thanks for having me. We are, we are talking about the issue of um, the roadmap. The NDC does not seem very uh, confident in this issue of roadmap. Once again, there's been a call for a release of the report. Uh, maybe I'll hear your initial comments and I'll come to 
I thought they were in government, so you'll be asking. And Leslie wants to start with Joyce, so with your permission, of course. I don't have a problem with that, so. Well, um, we know the menace of this vigilantism in our political discourse mm. and the cry out by even we, the most affected political parties, or let me say perpetrators of all these things, that um, has gotten to a point, I think, we are calling for a break mm. of this vigilantism, especially during elections and mm -hmm. other political activities. It's been well, it's been going on. Um, I believe the two major parties have been mm -hmm. in the front line to make sure that we get to, uh, in fact, we get to the bottom of it. Peace Council mm. has been in the hands of affair. It, it got the president to call on all political parties to come together and all other stakeholders to make sure that we get a solution to this. Well, it started well. You know, there were initial drawbacks from the NDC and things, calling on other things, saying they don't see why the president should be called until the president laid the paper before parliament. That, in fact, you know, there was an ally or mm. something that he didn't push, mm. put uh, before parliament. Then Peace Council came in. They invited the political parties, especially the two major ones, to mm. see how we can put an end to this vigilantism in our politics. I don't, I don't, I don't, I Is don't. It? In fact, I still not to get to understand our brothers on the other side. Well, well, what you see, Edwin Kejai is saying is that initially we called for hold. more mm -hmm. people to be involved. We mm -hmm. asked that this be a more holistic mm -hmm. meeting. Mm -hmm. We asked for for instance, the Ghana Police Service, mm -hmm. those in charge of the EC, for instance, mm -hmm. there should be other people sitting at the table, maybe other political parties. Mm -hmm. But the president's insistence on it should be MPP, NDC sitting at the table. That didn't go down too well initially with the NDC. And John, Johnson is saying, okay, I feel at this point that, you know what, I've been vindicated. Looking at this roadmap from the Peace Council, about just three or four points affect the political parties. Mm -hmm. Most of it is saying that we recommend the EC does this, we recommend the Ghana police do this. So the recommendations are made to other people who are not even sitting at the table. So he feels vindicated in that regard. Well, that's his opinion. Hmm. It depends on where you stand and the way you say things. But I think all said and done, we all end at one point. We're getting to a destination. It depends on how we all start or where we want to move through or which direction we want to go to get to the end destination. You, if you look, in fact, when we go down memory lane, you realize that this political vigilantism has been, with this, uh, two major political parties, mm. NPP and this. Every election, you don't get to hear of CPP, PPP, or you hear NDC, MPP. So, from where I stand, I think, look, we are the two people who has the in-depth knowledge of what is happening, hmm. and we have the solution to it. Well, yes, at, along the line, we can bring the police into it, because most of those things, when they happen, the police are short of arresting people, mm -hmm. or when even arrests are made, prosecution becomes a problem for them. There are a whole lot of things that go around. Are you saying you agree with Johnson? You said you don't get position that maybe other people should have been at the table? You see, even if other people need to come on board, mm -hmm. let's start with the two major stakeholders, as we say. Mm. You understand? Because if we are able to stop all those things, I mm. don't think there'll be much work for other stakeholders. No. What has EC got to do? Well, you know, we all we've all been calling for holistic amendments or reforms with the EC. Any time I've had an opportunity to attend any EC program, I said, look, I am looking at we synchronizing all our card system, like the national ID is trying to do now, mm. that you have one system elsewhere in other jurisdictions. All you need is when you are 18 years, it pops up. You just walk to either the passport office, you walk to the driving license, and you acquire your driving license or your uh, 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 your passport, you understand. But Ghana, every step you move, you need a special ID to identify mm. you, to to access whichever uh, uh, institutions. What do you call it? Mm. Forms or something you need to do. 
But here, when, if we are able to do that, and we have one card that, mm -hmm. you know, look, it will stop people if we know that, look, our, our electoral system is so centralized, it's so computerized, everything is there. 18 years, it pop up, it knows you. Why would you need a party agent at the police station? Hmm. Why? Why would you need people to go to the police station to make sure that uh, Joyce is coming to register or to acquire a, 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 an ID and she's not 18 or she's 16? Or, why? You understand? If we have all, like we are all trying to call for this electronic voting, if we are able to get all these things done, come watch me, you can never have a 100% perfection of everything you do. But when you are able to minimize hmm. the doubts of people, then you can have a good, free, clean election that people at the end of the results will say, okay. oh yes. So, there were challenges so on, on, the, on the issue of the president releasing mm -hmm. the report, the Emil Short Commission's report, is it not about time maybe the president releases it? The president has never said that he's not going to release the report, has he? We've mm. not heard from the president. But at but this also, crucial time the, that the parties are being forced the, to uh, move uh, forward. NDC also pushes so much for the Emily uh, uh, short, short report. report. Mm. Where there were the people when the president set up this commission mm. who cried out loud that they were not going to attend. Mm. They even held a press conference calling on all members of the National Democratic Congress not to appear before the commission. Well, we had some of their people attending. Mm. You understand? Not that notwithstanding, I'm not going to say they have no right to call for it. But yeah, we are people who rubbish the whole commission and said nothing good was going to come out of it. Very well, very well. Why? Very well. Joyce, well, I'm okay. <laughs> so flowing from what she is saying, and similar to what she has said, similar to what Joyce uh, Zampere has said, uh, Sami Oku is saying the NDC uh, they are being hypocritical in their demand for the report as a prerequisite to the roadmap success. Well, thank you very much. Good morning to you and to your viewers. And good mm. morning, Joyce. Good morning. Very nice tie you have on. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, I do think that I listened to the Honorable John Snassi Ketia yesterday. Mm. I largely agreed with him. Mm. In fact, on a very personal level, I'm one of those who even was not too convinced that there was any need actually for the largest opposition party, the National Democratic Congress, to actually attend to the invitation of the committee led by the eminent individuals who serve on the Peace Council. Mm. First and foremost, I do think that there's a need for commitment. And when it comes to commitment, there's a way that you exhibit commitment. Mm. I think on this occasion, in the whole aftermath of what happened at Ayawa So West Wogan, I personally do not think that His Excellency the President Nado Dan Kwakufuado has exhibited or evinced enough commitment to the course. It would start with the proceedings of the Emil Short Commission. Mm -hmm. We had very eminent, critical individuals who were actually tasked to serve on the committee. I can bet you if you met some of those individuals privately, they'll be surprised, considering the speed with which the committee was set up. Mm -hmm. And at the launch, if you remember, on the same platform, we had cause to discuss the conversation because of the words and the speech that was delivered on that day yeah. by the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, at the swearing-in ceremony. Mm -hmm. If anybody had told me that three months down the line, we'll be sitting here wondering whether or not the uh, Commission's report should be made public, yeah. what time it should be done, how and when and who should do it. And of course, now we're even speaking to the constitutional reasons why there is no really time yeah. for reasons why this should be done within a certain time and that the president has six months. Yeah. Why didn't we wait then to set up the initial commission three months later? Why didn't we wait? And why did that speech even have to be made? That this will be the last time such a thing will happen, that every effort will be made to make sure that history did not repeat itself or that such things didn't happen again yeah. and all of that. I remember saying that whenever you really want to do something and do it effectively, you talk a lot less. Mm -hmm. Whenever you hear people rambling on, delivering very long winding speeches, creating historical contexts that probably do not even exist or arise, 
then you know that they are deliberately trying to buy time. There was an exigency to what happened that day. Mm -hmm. It was to ensure that in future by-elections, we will ensure that there are no such activities of party militia groups or vigilante groups. We always come back to the point that historically, both of our largest political parties have always entertained to, entertain to an extent mm -hmm. some key party security. We have never legalized the activities. For the first time in the history of this country, we now know that they have names, they have uniforms, mm. there's a whole minister of state in charge of national security. These individuals without training are being absorbed into the security apparatus. Maybe not adequate training, but they, they have been trained to some extent. I'm not sure what they are trained to do. They are trained to go and attack their political opponents. They are not trained to go and protect citizens or secure their safety. Well, we don't they know the nature of their no, training at this point. One of them was granted a very long interview. Hmm. And he actually spoke extensively that they were actually trained to come and patrol ballot boxes. These are well, so, so, so not to knowledge. attack their political opponents. It doesn't matter. But if you are going, to, we saw what happened at the APW. Hmm. You don't understand me. Let's get it very clear. Mm. Those individuals are not sent there to go and pick you up and attack you. But the idea is that wherever you see an, a political opponent who misbehaves or tries to attack you, or even is within the vicinity, you are supposed to take charge. That's all that they do. <laughs> but you, 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 that. you just gave a, a, a premise that Let's not whoever spend time, misbehaves or no, tries no, no, to no. attack you, Let's just stay with you the deal facts. with it. No. No, that, I, that's I, I'm clear I am, from what you said. No, no, yourself. no, no. I am staying on my point. Hmm. Your words and mine are not the same. Political vigilante groups hmm. have suddenly been endorsed by the state. There is a state capture of our security services hmm. that is allowing for persons who are not trained, not sized with the requisite training to belong to our security agencies and are being duly recruited, hmm. given arms to go out there and misbehave. Hmm. If the president wants to show commitment, that committee was chaired by an eminent jurist in mm. short he has served locally domestically and at the highest level at the international courts mm -hmm. if you were sitting as a supreme court judge or as a high court judge mm -hmm. you'd have the singular power mm. to commit to a sentence any of those individuals where they are brought to trial and the evidence leads to the fact that there have been some atrocities or that they have committed some crimes on this occasion he sits as a chair of a commission of inquiry Mm -hmm. The commission has made recommendations, which are now of a very public nature. What has been done? Have you heard of any arrests? Have you heard of any sanctions? Have you even heard that any of those persons directly related or associated to the infractions have resigned from their jobs? That is the first part. Mm -hmm. We then move on to another committee that was set up to engage political parties to find a better solution or a safer solution Okay. Or a quicker solution to okay. resolving the matter. I'll, 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 I'll come back to you so we wrap up on this particular discussion. But for now, I have to take a break. Uh, so we'll go for a quick break now. When we return, we'll be talking also about issues of corruption and also, also what is going on with the uh, chairman of the NPP. Says contempt case against him by Shraj is very, very incompetent. We'll go for a break. We'll return. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's still Breakfast Daily. We're here on City TV. Now, I uh, do remember that you can send your messages, hashtag Breakfast Daily. I shall be reading them shortly. And of course, the WhatsApp line is 0550 Joyce, I'll have you up. Well, yes. So certainly government mm. has not shown enough commitment. Mm. And I do think that government is not going to take this matter anyway. Mm. It is actually in their interest to continue to stall the process, mm. to continue to ensure that they keep Ghanaians in the dark, to mm. continue to even create the impression that the leaked report is not actually the actual report, that mm -hmm. there's yet another report. As far as the proceedings at the Peace Council meetings are concerned, I think it's only right mm. that the main political parties will attend to the meetings of the Peace Council. As you well know, the Peace Council has always mm -hmm. been at the center of political arbitration, I must say. So we do need to give them or accord them the courtesies because they stand for something. Mm. And when it is needed most, they have always appealed for calm, they've always been mediators, and of course have acted in a very conciliatory role towards both political parties. But coming back to the point, the whole, the back mm -hmm. stops with His Excellency the President. Mm. All of us can talk forever. 
he can send hundreds of communicators to defend it. Yeah. John Ponkuma can call maybe 10 other press conferences. The constitution says he has six months. Mm. We are almost in the fourth month. Mm. So let's hope that over the next few weeks, we would actually see a government white paper issued based on the recommendations of the committee and yeah. the way forward. Yeah. But before then, I do think that even considering the discourse at the proceedings, mm. some arrests should have been made. Okay. Some prosecutions should have started, mm. and we should actually have seen a firmer commitment yeah. from the government. Yeah. Choice. Well, the president is ever committed. He's been committed, and he always continue to be committed to the core of this nation. And you know, the NDC, I mean, it's been speculated. Mm -hmm. The national chairman then said on a the tape that look, they will send the chairman of the peace council to the cleanest. Mm -hmm. So I'm not be surprised that. <laughs> <laughs> this mediation okay. is something that they just want to put out there. The that, of that, that, that tape is yet to be verified. Well, well, well. <laughs> the tape is yet to be verified. Well, so the so tape is, is, is inadmissible on this just, platform. They are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are just out there to make themselves visible for people okay. to see that they've also participated in whatever has been I want to read. I want to read a few comments here. You, Farouk says, uh, he's writing from Tamale. He says, this roadmap will be a mirage because MPP will not disband their vigilantes. Mm -hmm. Hashtag Breakfast Daily. Uh, Howard from Palestine says the Sedun Ketia and his NDC should take Ghanaians a bit uh, serious. The silent majority are watching. And um, they should not think because John Mahama said Ghanaians have short memory. They can always throw dust into the eyes of Ghanaians. If Ghanaians want a political party who can move Ghana forward, NDC should count themselves out. Anyway, so well, that's your opinion. But they still maintain that they are the largest political party in the country now let's move on to uh corruption related story fight against corruption i'm reading from page 16 of the ghanaian times it says here panelists at a forum on corruption have called for an urgent review of the constitutional provision that empowers the president to appoint majority of his ministers from parliament arguing that it weakens the fight against corruption so uh daniel yao domelovo was there uh, clara Kasati was there, and of course, Professor Stephen Adai, and they were speaking at the second national dialogue on anti-corruption. So, reflecting on the provision, Madam Kasati explained that it had weakened uh, the oversight role of Parliament on the executive to ensure accountability in the use of public funds. The provisions have proven to be ineffective, according to her, this is what she's saying, ineffective in the attainment of the objectives for which it was put in, in the constitution. It's about time we assess how this structure has worked for us going forward and then revisit that uh, structure. So, because I'll start with you on this one, Joyce Bar Mutari, on whether or not even ministers or the executives should be picked from parliament at all what and I, how what, it what, relates what, what to What really has that got to do corruption. with corruption? Hmm. They, they feel the legislature should be more or less play a supervisory role on the executive. Now, when you have ministers coming from the legislature, then it becomes a problem. I'm not sure in what context we situate this particular account. Mm. If we're talking about a fight against corruption, mm -hmm. I don't think corruption starts with who you appoint and mm. how many you appoint and where they come from. I also do not think that even if you didn't have to appoint any number of your appointees from parliament, it would in any way ameliorate or stem corruption. Corruption is actually something that we should look at in many different ways. It has many facets. Mm -hmm. It's personal. Mm -hmm. It can also be general. It can also be as a result of a certain lack of patriotism. So it comes in all sorts of forms and ways. I think this is just probably a very nice way of people sitting on a bench and trying to say really nice things. Mm -hmm. If we are looking at it from a perspective of law, Clara is a lawyer like myself. If that is what we're looking at, what is it that the law has not made provision for, which is why we are unable to stem corruption? That is the first. Is it that we don't have adequate laws to deal with corruption? That is second. Is there a reason why the Attorney General is unable to prosecute matters of corruption as they should? Thirdly, why are we not naming and shaming even basically persons that we believe for one reason or the other are perceived to be corrupt? You know, this is a conversation that we've had. I think it's a very it's an overflowed subject. Hmm. If government wants to show commitment to fighting corruption, it will not be because of the numbers you appoint 
from parliament mm -hmm. or that the number of persons. So, I mean, do, you feel, do you feel one of these even, ways, for instance, is the appointment or the office of the special You know, I had an interesting conversation with somebody mm -hmm. and we were talking about corruption. And then when I said, oh, but you know, I'm not sure the person you are mentioning, the conversation you are having really is about corruption. And he said, oh, but Joyce, you know, if someone works in a church and goes to invest the church's money in the wrong place without consulting anybody, that's corruption. Mm. And this was a young child. <laughs> that tells you that it's at all facets. It's not about these conversations we have. I remember when Mahama was president. I don't think Professor Day will be sitting on a bench like this and giving such examples. Mm. Are we now trying to glorify corruption? create panels to come and speak to what effort or our inability to deal with corruption. What is good for the goose is good for the kanda. If you want to criticize, criticize openly mm. that corruption is still in our society, that it's as endemic as it's always been. And each time we discuss corruption, we all delightfully recall President Kufour's words of wisdom that he was as old as Adam and very difficult to fight. Mm. So all of these things will not be the reason why government has not been able to fight corruption. Government actually campaigned extensively on the need to fight corruption. And that if they came into government, they would do A, B, C to stem it. I believe that we're still waiting to see that extra mile that government will take. But charity begins at home. You've listened to many schools of thought, many stakeholders, and now the so-called neutrals that are being attacked mm. left and right by government social media bloggers. I don't think that there's been any change, really, as far as our conversation about corruption is concerned. I have worked in the public service, I've worked in the private service. I know exactly what levels corruption has taken this country to. The enormous waste hmm. that Auditor General speaks to day in, day out. If we are serious about fighting corruption, mm -hmm. I personally do not think, even from a professional perspective, that it has anything to do with the quote you read. How many people are in government? Presently, even with over bloated government of 123 ministers. Hmm. Do you believe that that microcosm of them in government will be responsible for the entire corruption that we face in this country? When you go to DVLA, when you go to the hospital, when you take your national health insurance card and you don't get the requisite medications that you're supposed to get, all those things. She spoke about in countries where you wake up in the morning, you've turned 18, and then you receive a letter. Now you can vote, you can drive, you can do this. I can bet you, when you go to the queues to register for the national, health, national ID card, they tell you that their systems are not working. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, two people were sent to a particular location around East Legon. They were told that the system was slow, that the online service had broken down, so they should come back, and that they couldn't work even beyond 1 p.m. It is only in Ghana that as many automations as we have achieved, mm -hmm. we have stayed the same. Go to the DVL and ask them, that your driver's license is missing, or you lost it. Instead of asking you to bring a short police report so they can issue you with a new one, you start all over, and I'm doing it this week. Mm -hmm. I have paid 600 Ghana cities to start the process all over. I have been driving since I was 17. This is the system. You know, the reality mm -hmm. is not what we sit here and talk about. And sometimes I get very passionate about some of these conversations. We are just reinventing the wheel. Well. If you want to take action, you know what to do. Well, Joyce. Oh, corruption and its <laughs> formation and how to tackle it. It's, it's at times when this topic is covered, you, you you get so confused you don't even know where to start from. Hmm. But um, it is because of the perception out there too. You realize that like, look, those kind of engagements are also very very important mm -hmm. because it is always perceived that people at higher uh, uh, positions are the one who perpetuate this form of crimes you understand and to work out those things get people to understand that it's all not only limited to people in higher authorities mm -hmm. but it starts from even our streets like she rightly said when you go out there in the streets and things what do we do? How do you get access to anything that you want? The little siphoning of funds and things all around. But um, with the call of this and then uh, the ministers, in fact, I quite remember during the late Professor Atamel's, uh, the late president's time, mm. you know, there was this constitutional amendment, there was this you and cry about the same thing, mm -hmm. that look, 
we should look at how we, we have this constitutional amendment where we, 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 the appointment of some uh, ministers from parliament should be dealt with mm -hmm. because it looks like we all from this 92 for a uh, fourth republican especially we've realized that look having ministers majority of ministers from parliament was mm -hmm. also weakening the work of parliament mm -hmm. because you have most of them out there doing their own ministerial work and that taking them away from their parliamentary call duties all those things that kept come up and we all had you know, it was out there we had these deliberations all along i don't know how far we went with that, those constitutional because or, 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 already they have they are torn between their constituency and, and parliamentary, parliamentary work. work. And now you're adding another work, work executive work. Just to take them out, mm. you understand? And then people sit in the back also, so like, look, there's a, a colleague MP who is a minister you need to go to for an assistant. You understand, mm. one way or the other. When he comes to you to present something to you, in part, you know, all these things came up. But you ask that, is that only the core to corruption? Mm -hmm. Is that only the one that we see? as where you can perpetuate this form of corruption? Mm. No. There are other agencies, other places. I quite remember there was a day I, on a, I was on a platform I was being had on public servants and civil servants, the things that go around. For you to push your document, you get there and the document, a whole document gets missing. And you have to start over, like you said. The, 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 in fact, mm. the stress you have to go through, mm. the monies you have to dot out, are things that we don't talk about. She, do, do, she, you, she you, do, do you feel, as a government, for instance, mm -hmm. the current administration, do you feel we've done well to minimize or tackle corruption fairly? Government is on the fight against corruption. Hmm. But my personal, I think there's more, like our school teachers, well, we have more room for improvement. Hmm. So if you were to rank the current government's fight against corruption, what, over 100, maybe what, grade would you give them? Am I here in the test? <laughs> <laughs> Let me be fair. Hmm. I would say 51%. 51%. Yeah. Okay. Very well. Now I want us to move on to another story. Oh, is that all? I have just... Okay, so wrap, wrap up. You see? And then there's this perception and then I don't know whether relations in our system that we need to fight seriously. Where we see people with a lot of resources being classified as the best and things. And then GRE also not living up to tax. In fact, that's one thing I've always said that. Mm. I'll always take GRE on. Mm. Because we have people, you don't know their, their source of income, mm. you don't know their source of generation, and all this, before you realize the things they do, whereas in other jurisdictions, mm -hmm. tomorrow if they see you riding in a Range Rover, IRS will come after you. Yeah. Just for you to come out with how much income you're earning, how much you're able mm. to, and then your tax components. You're even going too far. Mm -hmm. You know that these, there's now a new law in the United Kingdom mm -hmm. which allows the state mm -hmm. to vet where you are getting money from to buy properties in their okay. country. Mm -hmm. So today, if you walk into the United Kingdom in the past, if you had $1 million to invest, mm -hmm. you got an, a, set, a permit immediately mm -hmm. to live in the UK. Mm -hmm. Now, because of the types of people who come and buy the properties there, now you must have, there's a law called disclosure of source of income. income. So yeah. any foreigner who enters there and purchases any property of a certain value, immediately you're under investigation. Mm. And if you go and check, a lot of those properties have been confiscated. Mm. You see now, you don't hear conversations about how many people are going and buying properties mm -hmm. in some countries. Why are we not doing the same in Ghana? Fair sure. Well, you have that? I think we can you move said on it a, all. Okay, now let's move on to another story. Our final story for today, Shraj's case against me over 275 buses incompetent. It's coming from the chairman of the national, or the new patriotic party, sorry. So the national chairman of the NPP, Freddie Blay, has described as incompetent the contempt suit brought against him by the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, Shraj. Now, Mr. Blay, who appeared before the court on Tuesday, said he has not in any way or manner disrespected Shraj or failed to appear before the commission as being claimed. He further added in his, res in his response to the contempt suit that neither he nor his office has received any summons from Shraj, hence cannot be held in contempt for not appearing before the commission. 
So there's been a back and forth between Freddie Blay and Shraj, of course. Uh, Shraj insisting that there was even a subpoena. But then Freddie Blay says, I have not been served. You know where I live. You know where I work. Everybody knows me in this country. I have not run away. I'm not hiding. There has been nothing served on me. So I'll start with you, Council, on this issue. Well, thank you very much. Very interesting circumstances, interesting facts. In one breath, the President and Adedan Kwakufuado says he wants to strengthen government institutions, mm -hmm. give them teeth to bite, mm. give vent to the establishment laws. In the same vein, we have a chairman of his party who says that the fact that the uh, investigative body has actually come out to say that they cannot locate me to serve me means that they're playing politics. I would like to look at it in two ways because I'm not sure exactly what has transpired. Hmm. But first and foremost, when it comes to service of, for example, a very personal writ or a summons, we usually call it personal service. Hmm. So they'll come to your last known address, they'll try to come and find you yourself because you are probably named in the suit. If they're unable to find you, it will have to be maybe somebody who everybody acknowledges either knows you, works for you, etc. There are also in instances where if they come to serve me, for example, and I'm not in the office, my clerk can say that, no, my boss is not around, so I will not accept service from you. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm not present. You haven't seen me physically. Mm. It makes it difficult then for the bailiff, because if he throws it in the middle of the room, he hasn't served anybody. So this is what a judge would insist on. When you come back, you should even have signed mm -hmm. that you met to so and so, he has received this is a signature or mark as evidence of the fact that you have indeed delivered to the individual. Hmm. That is the system. You see, yeah. a lot of people don't understand the practicalities. Mr. Freddie Blee is not one of those. So I don't know what the difficulty of Shiraj has been, but they have not been able to meet him personally to serve him with the petition mm -hmm. or the summons, I do not know. But what I've also found out is that apparently he has even gone to court. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what he's challenging. I didn't get that aspect of it effectively. I don't know whether he went to court to challenge Shiraj's uh, summons or the petition. I don't know what it is because as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. Shiraj has not even investigated the petition yet. Mm. They are inviting him to come and help them with the investigations. I, I think Shiraj, I Shiraj sought some or sought to bring some contempt charges against him. Uh -huh, because they had refused. Exactly. Uh -huh, that's what so I thought. So that's why he's in court. Exactly. And so I think that is a good exercise. Mm. Let's see how it goes. But I think that you see some individuals are usually very critical influencers. How they react to situations, mm -hmm. how they take on government institutions. Remember that in every job, you have your credibility to protect. You also have a certain level of integrity that you need to exhibit. I listened to the charge commissioner. I actually felt sorry for him listening to him. You don't expect that if, for example, there's a petition against His Excellency the President mm -hmm. and you are trying to just go to Flagstaff House, see if you can have a conversation with someone, either himself or someone very close to power. And for many occasions, you are denied that access. It means then that with one hand, you've given me power to mm -hmm. do my job. In another breath, you are taking it away from me by undermining the same institution that you've set up to undertake investigations. As I said, I don't want to profit too much because mm. I really do not know what the exact facts right. are and I have not followed. But I have listened to the Honorable Freddie Blay, Freddie mm. Blay himself. Mm. I've also listened to the Shride Commissioner. Mm. And I listened also to the very vitriolic interview by Mr. Blay's own personal assistant. Fair and right. I do hope that if we all have such peace, we we'll would find a way to get them to reflect your boss in every engagement, especially with the public. Fair Fair Yes. Well, let me say I've not been following, mm. I've not been so much the, with this, the happenings. I just some few mm. bits around, yeah. Well, uh, I mean, the, uh, the, the effect of such charges being uh, brought against and I learned the, this about the, the, chairman. Two, the, the, the vehicle 275 buses, buses, yes. Buses. Yes, they, they he effect said he if, was purchasing for the yeah. if, if, if the contempt allegations against him are successful, he could face, he could possibly face some form of uh, custodial sentence as well. 
Well, no, not oh, for con oh. not for not for a petition to Shraj. No, mm. you know Shraj does not have powers of. Uh, no, 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 not Shraj. Uh -huh. Because Shraj is in uh -huh. court, so okay. the court. Yes, but of course, court. you know that someone like Honorable Freddie Bley will not be held in for contempt. But I think that he should just allow them to do their yeah. work. During uh -huh. the election petition, yes. there are some people we thought would never oh. see the inside of. But well, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you see, the, the law is very simple, and people yeah. will tell you nobody <coughs> above the law. Well, uh -huh. But true. I just think that you should just do what is needed. Mm. Honorable Freddie Bley is a very Astute legal practitioner. I don't mm. think that we need to go to. Maybe he doesn't understand the need even for an investigation. Mm. But somebody has petitioned such. So he should allow the process so. avail himself. Very simple. Joyce. Well, I, I have nothing. I, have, I, have, I don't think. I don't think I have much to say about this mm. because, like, this is just the beginning of it. We we'll wait to see. Mm. All what I will say is, I believe he will adhere to the calls and then submit himself to whatever investigations are being done so that at the end of it the results will prove itself hmm. um there are aggrieved people who have petitioned shiraj over some vehicles he mm -hmm. promised the party so we'll wait to see the, the vehicles have, have all of them come now 275 we saw some of I them i don't even, even I am hoping that I'll be a beneficiary. <laughs> <laughs> we saw so, some of them. I, 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 didn't you benefit from from my president John Draman Mahamas vehicles? You see, you know, he was just out there. I, 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 I didn't, I didn't want to oh, go there. Oh, let let's me, not the, go there. The you, you've had, you've had the same breath. In the same breath, he said that if someone saw you in a Range Rover, they would question the source of the income. So unless you're undermining your pending subscriptions. But are all the buses in, Joyce? The two of us, you're not sure. I'm not sure. She's not riding in the bus, so I'm sure she's not sure. I'm not sure. Anyway. So I believe Shraj will adhere to what he's saying. Anyway. So I believe... We'll wait to mm. see. Um, he's you know, we, we honestly didn't expect it to get to this level. Of we course. thought it would be between Shraj and Freddie Blay at this point. But for Shraj to actually go to court and um, now Freddie Blay has to come to court, I mean, he has indicated to the court that he is not... He was not served any ceremony. He has he's not, not been served, served exactly. Yeah. So those are the things I believe the court to find out why he's not being yeah. served, why... Hmm. The delays and all those things. I believe they will... But you know that for the court yeah. to even agree to issue... Hmm. A bench for us, exactly. yeah. It so means that he has just not availed himself yeah. of the service. That, that, that's what I'm saying. I've got him to levels that we never thought would get there. And also likewise refused hmm. to accept service on his behalf. Yeah. It's the way it is. I, 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 and I we know he's here, so you will not yeah. even be serving by substitution because, of course, you exactly. can do that as well. Exactly. Uh -huh. Now, I want us to um, touch on this story before we go. We are just talking, just brief comments about it, about what's happening with uh, Guta. Um, the... Greater Accra regional chairman also was arrested and according to him, he was beaten by the police. And um, we, we know what is currently happening. The <coughs> Swami magazine <coughs> issues amongst others. So a statement that was made, for instance, by the Greater Accra regional chairman is that, you know what, some of us, the executives, so one, one lady was arrested, one of the executives w was arrested, and then the other executives went to the police station to find out what had happened. And according to the Greater Accra Regional Chairman, they were beaten up by the police. They were beaten up mercilessly by the police. So he, he made a statement. He said, you know what, now it's one nil. The police have done this. And he cautioned the that police, police there shouldn't be, one. according to him. So it's, it, has, it is taking a different level right now, where the members of Guta feel... Uh, foreign traders are being protected against our laws, or when they are doing the wrong thing, they are still being protected. So I just want you to touch on this really briefly, then you touch on it and then wrap up. Well, you know, these recent incidents have been most, most unfortunate. Mm. It is also a matter that is very, very sensitive. We all recall the repercussions many years ago mm -hmm. of the Aliens uh, Compliance, Compliance Act. Act. Mm. We remember the days of Ghana must go. Mm -hmm. I think we have achieved a certain modicum of integration since then. Mm. But you see, sensitive as this issue may be, every country has found ways of some level of protection mm. for its citizens. Mm -hmm. In Nigeria, for example, years ago we used to export salt mm -hmm. to Nigeria. But they realized that because of the imports from other countries, their own industry was collapsing. They stopped importation of salt. A few years back, I remember, they stopped the importation of sugar mm. because they were producing copious amounts of sugar 
and even able to export. You know, it's always a quid pro quo, mm. but it's also how we handle it. Mind you, there can be some foreigners who have acquired citizenship mm. by marriage, and so are allowed, like us, to engage in retail business. A few years back, it was the China businesses in Makola market. Mm -hmm. If you remember, mm. there were similar statements by members of Guta mm. and their president, okay. etc. Yes. So I think this is a matter that we must handle with UK. Mm. We don't want any retaliatory activities. Mm. We do not want any harm to come to persons who live here amongst us. But I also believe that somehow our enforcement is what has failed us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, what else can I say? I think enforcement of the law is mm. what we are lacking. Mm. Because we allow people to come in. There are rules of mm. every country mm -hmm. and every institution. Mm -hmm. You understand? We have those we have for the trade industry and all those things. What have we done about it? How far have we carried it along mm -hmm. to make sure that foreigners who come here will also mm. abide by the laws? Mm. You understand? It, 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 it's, it's a very dicey issue if you, you don't handle it well. Because I, I watch a, a news item where Swabi, when they attack. We ran out of time, so let's not refer to that news item. Oh, no in a sentence you, or two. So it, it is very, very important. We need to so we, we need to get people to understand mm. the rules of engagement in ev everywhere they find themselves, yeah. so that we all by by be binded by Thank it, you. and then we'll move on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Joy Zampari, she is the MPP Deputy National uh, Communications Director. Uh, they stole a bag and she got a cold. <laughs> Joyce Ampari, thank you so much for joining us on Breakfast Daily. And uh, we're also joined by Joyce Bar Mokhtari. She's a special aide to the former president, John Dramani Mahama. Thank you so much for joining thank us, you. Council. Thank you. For now, uh, stay tuned. It's still Breakfast Daily. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>